Good day everyone. My name is Jetro Ventura and today we're going to talk about information technology management, uh, IoT or Internet. Internet of Things. Uh, Internet, Internet of Things describes the network of physical objects or things that are embedded with sensors, software, and other technologies for the purpose of connecting and exchanging data with other devices and systems over the internet. Uh, as I know, uh, most, most of us are already familiar with IoT. And these devices may range from ordinary household objects to sophisticated industrial So what is the importance of IoT? IoT has become one of the most important technology of the 21st century. So every objects like kitchen appliances, cars, thermostats, baby monitors are already connected to the internet via embedded devices, uh, which enables sim seamless uh, communication between people, processes, and things. Um, these physical things can share and collect data with minimal uh, human intervention. Um, other devices don't need uh, human intervention, uh, but you have signed with the collection agreement, data collection agreement, and Yung, ano, sa privacy concerns. Digital systems can record, monitor, and adjust uh, each inter interaction between connected things. So next is, why is IoT possible today? So first is the access to low-cost, low-power sensor technology. So as you can see on the graph, uh, as uh, time passes by, the cost per sensors uh, that IoT uses is continually uh, decreasing yung cost. So affordable and reliable sensors are making IoT technology possible uh, for more manufacturers. Tapos, next is the connectivity. So, a host of network protocols for the internet has made it easy to connect sensors to the cloud and other things for efficient data transfer. So, dahil nga, uh, halos lahat na nga ng mga devices natin is connected na nga sa internet. So, parang yun na rin yung isang nagpapadaling way for IoT. So next is cloud computing platforms. So the increase in the availability of cloud platforms uh, enables both businesses and consumers to access the infrastructure they need to uh, scale up with without actually having to manage it all. So yung data collection is nandun na sa cloud ngayon. Tapos, next is machine learning and analytics. So, with, ad, with the advances in machine learning and analytics, uh, along with access to varied and vast amounts of data stored in the cloud, so businesses can gather insights faster and more easily. So, the emergence of these allied technologies continue to push the boundaries of IoT. And the data produced by IoT also feeds these technologies. So, yun niya, yung connectivity, lahat sila connected. Yung connectivity, yung cloud. Plus yung mga advances in machine learning and analytics. So, next is the conversational artificial intelligence or AI. So, the advances in neural networks uh, brought natural language processing to IoT devices. So makikita naman natin siya uh, like with Alexa, uh, Cortana, and Siri. Uh, parang 
with the devices we purchase, uh, kasama na rin sila. Tapos, ano na rin siya eh, nagko-collect na rin siya ng data at saka yung behavior ng mga tao. Parang nakokollect na din doon. Kaya, yung IoT, parang mas lalong na improve with the interaction with you. Tapos, sa human side naman. So, parang, mas appealing sa kanila. Tapos, parang, mas nagagamit mas nagagamit natin siya. Ayan. What is industrial IoT or IIO? So, IoT uh, refers naman to the, ano naman, yung parang IoT in industrial level. So, it refers to the application of IT technology IoT technology in industrial setting, especially with respects to uh, instrumentation and control of sensors and devices that engage cloud technologies. So, yun, ganun talaga pag IoT, talagang laging involved siya sa cloud. So, recently, industries have used machine-to-machine -machine communication to achieve wireless automation and control. Uh, with the emergence of cloud, and allay technologies nga yung sinasabi ko kanina na yung improvement with uh, advancement with the cloud and analytics and machine learning ai yan yung industries uh, can achieve a new automation layer and with it uh, create new revenue and business models so kung makikita niyo diyan dun sa example niya yung common uses for iiot So, sa smart manufacturing, uh, connected assets and preventive and predictive maintenance. So, yan, gaya nung example dyan sa picture. So, ang ginagawa dyan is parang, ano siya eh, uh, yung asset mo connected, uh, for this example, yung tractor. So, nakikita mo yung status niya, yung levels ng mga fluids, mga ganun. Tapos kung uh, kailangan na ba siya for maintenance. Ayan. So with that, uh, na, mas nakakatipid yung mga companies kasi mas na-schedule nila yung, yung for maintenance na ba to, Tapos nakakapag-plan ahead sila with uh, kung paano yung magiging araw na yun kung naka-in-service yung tractor. And kaya mas nakakatulong siya sa industry. Tapos smart power grids, ganun din. Uh, based naman yun sa mga consumptions. Meron ng mga ibang countries na ganun na parang chinecheck nila yung energy consumption per grid. So parang mas napeprepare nila yung uh, allotted energy for that specific grid. Tapos yun niya, yung smart city. So medyo aware naman tayo dito na ang smart cities talaga is with the power of IoT tsaka ng cloud. Connected logistics. Yan, so, uh, ang pwede nating example dito is yung parang sa mga delivery services like yung familiar tayo with Shopee and Lazada. So, with the, uh, yung mga devices na connected, so natatrack natin yung parcel natin kung nasa ang warehouse na sila or on the way na ba sila. Ayan. Tapos, smart digital supply chains. Ayan yung mga ano, common uses for IIO. So, next is the enterprise architecture or EA and the Internet of Things. So, parang ito naman yung connection or parang ano yung uh, Paano natin ma-apply yung EA with the IoT? So, enterprise architecture, uh, familiar naman tayo, is a blueprint for the deployment of IT resources that support business services and processes. Uh, EA is a high-level view of six fundamental domains, services, uh, process, information, application, data, and infrastructure. So kung makikita nyo sa figure, EA aligns with the new technology capabilities with innovative business architecture processes and services. So yung dyan sa figure, sa figure na yan, 
yung mga new architecture elements na related to IoT. Yun yung mga naka-red. So, yung uh, configurable, custom, ongoing, yung makikita niyo dito. Tapos yung on-demand, saka yung Hadoop. Uh, yung Hadoop sa pagmamanage ng data yan, saka yun no SQL. Tapos yung cloud data. Tsaka syempre yan, yung mga connections nila kung paano nagiging connected yung uh, mga domains. In the business architecture with IoT, uh, commodity services with standard processes and operational data are augmented with custom services delivered to config configurable processes. So these processes provide on-demand information tailored to user preferences or customized processes, delivering unique services associated with multiple and diverse connected devices. So in ya, yung new, plat new data platforms, including Hadoop, no, SQL, and Cloud Data, will be used to house huge volumes of data. The IoT will enable people in their daily lives to access custom services implemented using configura configurable processes. So, pwede natin example dito is, kunwari meron kang ano, uh, smart refrigerator. So, pwede kang mag-set ng mga ano, uh, food expiration policies tapos uh, magre-rely ka dun sa automated uh, leading signals na bago siya mag-expire. So yung configurable uh, yung configurable uh, process na yun, yung pwedeng mag-minimize ng ano food loss. Tsaka syempre niya yung bare reduce yung consumer na yung cost sa pag-grocery niya kasi mas hindi siya na expire na pagkain. So ang pag kinonect mo naman siya sa si EA So parang pwede yun kunwari within the ano naman sa side naman ng food manufacturer. So kunwari meron kang ano meron kang food na parang nagpo-post nagpo-post siya ng public health risk na pwede mong i-signal yung ano consumer na yung pagkain na yun is may exposure to that kind of risk. So with the ano yung real time design pwede mo agad ma-notify yung ano yung consumer mo. Tapos pwede yun kung kunwari integrated yung uh, smart refrigerator mo with the cloud. So kung kunwari na-identify ng refrigerator na meron kang gantong food, so lalabas yung notification na yung gantong food is parang uh, yun nga, may risk nga. Tapos next natin is high-level EA and techniques. So business strategy is driven by external and internal forces. Enterprises must consider competition, market conditions when formulating business strategy. So there are six EA techniques and methods are utilized to implement and sustain EA. So first is yung reference model. So reference models is the taxonomies that provide standardized categorization for uh, strategic businesses and technology models and information. So medyo familiar na tayo dito kasi medyo natakil na natin yung EA. So next is the governance, yung processes for connecting the business vision and project execution with the current and future enterprise reality. Thus, next is the standards, uh, the best prax practices that ensures the services align with the company strategy. Next is the principles, the general rules or guidelines for designing a system. The key process indicators, KPIs, the measures of outcomes demonstrating EA benefits, then lastly is the security, which is the access and compliance management configurations and practices based on industry recommendations. 
for secure and interoperable identity management and access controls. So these configurations and practices, practices ensure security capabilities and plan a roadmap to meet the security needs of business. So the outcome of these techniques and methods is a concrete set of artifacts that guide a company and its stakeholders. So as the IoT becomes a greater part of strategy, in, an enterprise may require an expanded EA. So IoT complexity could result in changes to services, processes, and information. And these changes will require architectural adjustments to enable IT elements, including the applications, data, and infrastructure. So then, next is the IoT business service reference model. So it, it is a reference model that is the most important. Uh, a reference model is a the most important EA tool. So it is a schematic of the structure of selected architecture components. So yung sa US, meron silang sinet na yung EA framework. Uh, ito yung one is performance reference model, the PRM. The business reference model, data reference model, application reference model, infrastructure reference model, and security reference model. So a reference model can be constructed for business components as well as technology components. There are no hard and fast rules defining how many reference models are needed to define enterprise architecture or what format of reference models should be. So these models are taxonomies that provide standardized categorization, uh, categorization for strategic business and technology models and information. So this supports analysis and reporting across agencies, EAs, and each of documentation domains. So yung number one, yung performance reference model. Uh, it is a standard method for performance measurements, providing a common approach to performance and outcome measurements. So yung DRM naman, yung business reference model, uh, it is a map of organization's lines of business and business activities to services within and between the federal government organizations. Tapos next is the data reference model. Uh, it is a flexible common framework for effective sharing of government uh, information across organizational boundaries that increase integration and reduce opportunities and support semantic interoperability while respecting the security, privacy, and appropriate use of the information. Next is the application reference model, yung ARM, ARM. Uh, it is a system application-related standard and technologies that support and enable the delivery of services, components, and capabilities. Next is the infrastructure reference model. Uh, like for focus naman siya with the network uh, cloud uh, network and cloud na uh, related standards and technologies to support and enable the delivery of voice data video and mobile service components and capabilities That's next naman is yung sa security reference model uh, it is to establish uh, security controls in the architecture as well as a scalable, uh, repeatable, and risk-based methodology for addressing information security and privacy requirements within and across system and agencies. So in using this reference model, such as those in the federal government EA approach, 
uh, users, managers, architects, and developers can share a common framework for services, processes, information, application, data, and infrastructure. So parang yan lang yung nagiging standard uh, with DEAs. Tapos, as new or modified IoT devices become components of products or services, the Thing Service Reference Model supports uh, architectural analysis in the business service view of the overall EA. So, yung example, pwede kong maggawing example naman dyan is yung with the uh, R RFID tag na yung technology sa mga pack foods. So, yung new I yung new IoT services are viable. So, RFID enabled technology could support a new subservice that may be called sa inventory control. So, parang ang nangyayari lang dun is kung yung mga ayun niya, yung food packaging niya naka RFID so na monitor yung stocks nyo or yung inventory nyo ng pagkain sa bahay so pwede mong uh, pwede siyang mag-advise sa kung kailan ka dapat mag-replenish ng mga goods tapos kung na set mo siya configured mo siya pwedeng automatically mag-order na lang din siya sa mga suppliers and As next natin is the IoT principles. So IoT principles are critical guidelines for uh, an EA or enterprise architecture. They set expectations and reinforce that EA decisions are not arbit arbitrary. So in order to illustrate an EA principle, we have freedom of religion. So parang yan, kunwari, example lang natin. Uh, it is a principle that supports the freedom of an individual or community in public or private to manifest a religion or belief, teaching, practice, worship, and observance. It also includes the freedom to change one religions or belief. The freedom of uh, religion uh, principle has injured over 200 years in the U.S. and has guided the government, public, business, social, and cultural and individual individual decision making so similarly ea principles are simple promote consistency support flexibility and help enterprise realize their strategies so meron tayong mga ea principles uh my examples which are stated for the standard format so yung first is yung name uh, its uh, name establishes the essence of the rule as well as consistent identification. Then statement, the ambiguously communicates the fundamental rule. The national rationale, which describes the business benefits of adhering to the principle using business terminology and implication uh, which highlights the requirements both, uh, both for the business and IT for carrying out the principle in terms of resources, cost, and activities or tasks. Next, we have the IT governance. So IT governance, IOT governance is a set of mechanism through which architecture is endorsed in the enterprise. So it can be active or passive depending on how assertively architectural principles are informed. So if EA to be successful, uh, management must provide leadership by founding EA techniques and methods. So by sponsoring the construction of the architecture policies, principles, and processes and supporting the EA framework once completed. So the figure on the right shows uh, an IoT architecture governance model is a, as a foundation for the EA's team responsibility. So one of the responsibilities of an 
architect uh, participating in yung sa example natin na smart refrigerator smart refrigerator design is to determine the project's design impact. So if the design decisions are considered to have low impact on the reference model, the projects execute without a formula uh, formal resolution of EA inconsistencies. While if the project decisions, uh, design decisions are assessed to have a major impact on the, ref the reference model, the project uh, requires architectural guidance to ensure the adherence to the EA framework standard and principles. So yung parang mga napag-aralan natin ng mga previous lessons, yun niya, ang sinasabi lang dyan na the highest the impact, parang mas kailangan natin siyang i-communicate with the team. So parang mas ma-review natin or parang yung paggawa ng decision is within the organization. Next is the data design. So not all data fits into rows and columns stru structure of a RDBMS. So IoT, mobile, social, and cloud computing have created a massive flood of data. So based on estimates, 90% uh, of the world's data was created in the last few years with 80% of all enterprise data being unstructured. So yun nga, with the spike nga, with the IoT devices, so mas dumadami yung data collection. So ang nangyayari din, so mas maraming data ang nakokollect, mas maraming rows sa mga database natin. So ang ano lang, parang sinasabi lang doon na kailangan ingatan natin yung pagde-design ng mga uh, database natin tsaka yung tamang paggamit na kung structured ba or unstructured. So, sabi nga din dito, unstructured data is growing at twice the rate of structured data. So, yun nga yan kasi dahil nga sa mga ano, IoT devices. Then, kung i-example nga natin yan, yung kunwari yung sa smart refrigerator natin. Yung data kasing kinokollect nyan, hindi lang kapag binuksan mo siya, hindi ganun eh. Parang, uh, every day din kino-collect niya yung imagine man lang kino-collect niyang data every day from the temperature yung kung kunwari nga may food ka pang nakastore so 24/7 may data siyang sinesend sa tapos araw-araw din yun for the whole year so for one device lang yun imagine mo kung ilang lines or ilang rows na data yung pumapasok nun. The next is the data, data volume will require new unstructured data design concepts. So, ito na yung mga ginagamit ngayon with the uh, cloud storages tsaka yung mga unstructured data collection. So, yung not only SQL or no SQL is an alternative to building operational applications that drive businesses through flexible systems. So another example is the Spark or tsaka yung Hadoop. Uh, it is a high-capacity analytical system that can be deployed to analyze IoT data delivering powerful insights. Then we have also the MongoDB, uh, it dramatically simplifies the task of application development and eliminates the layers of complex mapping code. So it can scale to the very large and support horizontal sharding. So mamaya may explain natin ko ano yung horizontal sharding. Tapos Apache's Cassandra. So ang Apache's Cassandra naman is parang yung MongoDB din siya. Pero mas okay daw yung, ano, yung uh, replication. Mamaya yung replication na nandiyan. And yung sharding. Uh, sharding is essential. Essentially the concept of 
horizontal par- partitioning of the data table. So from the RDBMS, uh, where each partition forms a shard, which may in turn be located on a se- separate database server in the same or separate physical location. So the segmentation reduces the number of rows in a physical data table, which reduces index size and therefore improves search performance. So for the IoT, uh, sharding should uh, probably be based on the physical location of the device or data. So if with within Asia or within America. So this design will make it possible to find the rate the right shard easily and automatically and to query only the, re- the relevant shard. So inya, each shard holds some piece of data. Tapos next naman is yung replication. Uh, yung replication is the method of duplication of data across multiple servers. So, uh, ang example natin dyan is parang kunwari you have uh, yung server A tapos meron ka ding server B. So, parang tinaka, meron din siyang data, para siyang duplicate lang nung ano eh. Uh, para siyang cop, niya, copy duplicate nung server A, yung server B mo. So, pwede ka mag-query kay A, pwede ka rin mag-query kay B. So, yun nga lang, parang nagiging redundant yung data mo. Pero pwede na rin siyang mag, ano, mag-post as parang backup nung main DB mo. So, yun. by doing this, uh, you will get uh, redundancy yun nga, and increase data availability with multiple copies of data on different database servers. Yun yung sinasabi ko na meron ka, ang nangyayari, meron kang dalawang server na pwede mong pag-querihan kapag meron kang hinahanap. So, with this, uh, it will increase the performance of reading scaling. So, with replication, primary server receives all write applications and record all the changes to the data. So, yung secondary members then copy and apply this thing these changes in asynchronous process. So, isa pang advantage din with replication niya is kung kunwaring mag-down yung primary server mo, yung secondary server mo, pwede ka agad siya mas mag-act as yung primary server. So, yung putol niya, so parang mas saglit lang kasi nga uh, ano siya, parang copy or duplicate na siya ng main server. So, yan, yung conclusion natin is enterprise architecture is an important methodology for improving and cultivating the business value of IP. So, the emerging capabilities of the IoT are valuable processing data and analytical contributions to new enterprise service and processes. Then, the business value of the IoT can be realized and validated when an EA framework is applied to IoT strategy and projects. So, yun. Uh, architectures should integrate non-IT and IoT, uh, non-IoT and IoT into a unified blueprint. So, parang sinasabi lang na we have to be, uh, as sa EA, dapat prepare na natin lahat. Uh, it could be yung sabi nga na non-IoT or IoT devices. So new data technologies and flexible platform configurations can be implemented to manage this structured and unstructured data. And tapos replication, redundancy, and failure in this environment can be designed and managed in line with the business strategy. Tapos, the huge data volumes realized with IoT products and services can be organized, managed using cloud computing and no SQL devices. So, and, uh, these are my references.
Thank you. Stay safe.